Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Richard and you're watching Loch Ness Smithy Off Grid. Now the topic I wanted to talk about today was can I site a static caravan on agricultural land? This is quite a hot topic. It's regularly debated on Facebook. A lot of the Facebook groups, people are constantly asking, can I site a static caravan on agricultural land? Now it's not a straightforward question and there's not a straightforward answer. What most people mean is, can I buy a bit of land, put a caravan on it and live in there without planning permission? And this is where a lot of people get confused. There's a lot of Facebook warriors out there, keyboard warriors, that think they know what they're talking about and they actually have no experience whatsoever of what they are talking about. Now I've done this. It's not the first time I've done it. So, with regards to agricultural land, what do you mean? Well, if you mean an existing farm, yes, not a problem. As long as it's within the farm buildings, within the steading, you can site a couple of static caravans, as long as they're for your workers, without a problem whatsoever. If you've got a house in the town, or a house with garden ground, yes you can site a static caravan in your garden. Now where the confusion comes is if you're buying a plot of green belt land, just a field, and you intend to put a static caravan there. You can put a static caravan there, you can put a touring caravan there, as long as it's got wheels and a drawbar, you can site it there. The problem is, is you can't live in it without planning permission. It's not the caravan that requires the planning permission. It's the use of that caravan. So as soon as you site a static caravan there, that's fine. When you intend to live in it, you do need planning permission for it. And this is where the problem comes. If you phone your local planning department and ask them, do I need planning permission for a static caravan? They will not give you a straight answer. I've been there all that they will tell you is you need to submit a planning application. That's not them being awkward, that is because that's what they're told to do. They're told for any development to tell you to apply for planning permission. Now where you'll come unstuck is if you buy a bit of agricultural land and there's nothing on it and you apply for planning permission for a static caravan, they'll want to know why the hell you want it there they'll see it as an easy route to building a massive mansion on cheap agricultural land and they will refuse a plan application. Before they refuse it, they'll ask you a lot of questions. They will probably ask you for a business plan, cash flow forecast. You would need to get an agricultural business consultant like myself involved, somebody that's been to agricultural college, to write you that business plan. You'd also almost definitely need to get a planning consultant to draw your plans, you would need a building warrant for your septic tank, etc, etc. So this is where it gets confusing. It's one of these where it's better to ask for forgiveness rather than ask for permission. So if you site your static caravan on agricultural land, you might get away with it. If you get away with it for either four or ten years, you can then apply for a certificate of lawful use. You can apply, that is not guaranteed. So a certificate lawful use we will cover in another video. Just briefly, a caravan has to be sited for 10 years before you can get a certificate of lawful use. A dwelling has to be there for four years and a day. Now, it is a bit debatable when a static caravan then becomes a dwelling. Some people deem it as if you cut the drawbar off and remove the wheels and site it permanently bricked in underneath, connected to services, all of a sudden it's a dwelling. Your planning officer will probably argue that. He'll argue whichever scenario suits him best. So you might struggle with the, the certificate of lawful use. A lot of people also struggle if they do own a house elsewhere, whether it's a buy-to-let property, they own another dwelling, 
they may be paying council tax. Your planning officer will argue that you've not had continual, continual occupation of the caravan. So there's a lot of things you can fail on. So there's another scenario, and we're looking at the sheds just now because this other scenario is called the Barn Builders Gambit. Nearly every planning officer in the country knows about it. And there's a gentleman who says his name is David Akerman. I don't know if that's his real name. And he wrote a book called Field to Farm. It's a red book. You'll find it on eBay. You'll find it on Amazon. You'll find it on Gumtree. When you buy that book for £25, which is a lot of money for a little book, you will get access to his forum and you will also be able to contact him on Facebook. Now, his forum seems to be shut on the internet and he doesn't answer his Facebook page, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. His book is still quite useful. Some of the information isn't accurate. So his system relies on the fact that if you buy 12 and a half acres, I'll say that in England, if you buy 12 and a half acres or you control 12 and a half acres, you get permitted development rights. And at the moment, that means you can build an agricultural barn or barns, multiple barns, up to a thousand square meters in size. Now, in Scotland, it's a bit different. You have permitted development rights to build a building on agricultural land in Scotland if you own 0.4 of a hectare, which is only an acre. So it's a lot easier in Scotland than it is in England. Permitted development in Scotland changed on the 1st of April 2021, which is only a few days ago. And that permitted development increased the same as to England, where you can build a barn of up to 1,000 square metres. Prior to that, it was 465 square metres. So what David Aikerman's system relies on is the fact that while you are building under our current planning law, you can live on site while you're building in a caravan. It's quite a loosely worded statement. You can live on site in a caravan. Now, a static caravan is a caravan as long as it has a drawbar and wheels, as long as it's movable, as long as it can be moved in one piece without lifting it or, or cutting it up, having to cut anything. You need to be able to tow it off site. So for this, this is what David Aikerman means. And this is what a lot of people do. So the easiest route to live on site is to get permitted development for your agricultural barn, start digging, and as soon as you put your foundations in, site your static caravan. Site it close to your building somewhere discreet. You know, nobody wants it on top of a hill, nobody wants it on the side of a main road. That's where ours is sited, it's at the back of the stables, you'll see it tucked away in the back of the yard, within the curtilage of the yard, so. And when you start building your agricultural building, you generally have five years to complete it. Now, I know up here, recently the planners have clocked onto the system, so now they're giving you three years to complete a building. And I believe it's the same with a dwelling house. When you get planning permission for a dwelling house, you're to complete it within three years. Now, that doesn't mean you can't apply for permitted development for the first agricultural barn, and then when you're nearing completion, apply for a second, which is that black barn, and then just behind it, a third, and we've got a fourth in front. So that effectively extends you know, the, the right to remain on your land, the right to live here, while you build up your small agricultural business. Now, the planners don't really like static caravans, let's be honest. They don't like them. If you speak to a planning officer and get a sensible conversation, which is, is quite difficult, but some of them will speak to you sensibly, they will tell you that if you've got an existing business on agricultural land, you know, you've got a couple of sheds, you will be able to apply for planning permission for your cat static caravan to be there. This is if you know you can't use the loophole that you're building. Now, you will only get temporary planning permission for a static caravan. It will be almost impossible to get permanent planning permission unless you have, you know, a different scenario where you're a traveller, you're a travelling showman, it's winter quarters for somebody like that. So a static caravan to live in on agricultural land 
you're on a small holding, a small farm, you know, micro farm. Um, it needs to be for the purpose of agriculture and they would give you planning permission retrospectively for a period of three years while you build up your business. They don't want the static caravan to stay really beyond that period and the planners would expect you at the end of that three year period to have developed your business up to a profitable level. Um, you need three years audited accounts and the one they say one out of three needs to be showing a profit enough to support one one full-time employee so that's at 40 hours now that should really be your last year's accounts you know showing that the business has increased in profit you know you're building it up you've put money into sheds money into machinery you've improved your land you know you're actually trying to do something and then the planners would expect you to apply for planning permission for a house now the house would be commensurate to the size and the profit of your business. So, you know, one of our neighbours here, he's actually, it's not an agricultural business, it was a horse dealing business. He bought four and a half acres of agricultural land. He um, applied for planning permission for a stable block. Right, sorry folks, my phone got knocked off there because somebody repeatedly called my mobile and made my, made my phone crash. Um, so, we were talking about a neighbour who bought four and a half acres of land. Now, he um, applied for planning permission for a stable block, sited his static caravan, built another agricultural building, and then after four years, he submitted planning permission for a dwelling house, and um, he got it. He submitted his business plans. It wasn't a farm. It was a horse dealing business, but some areas of the UK, especially Scotland, are more lenient to allowing rural um, businesses on agricultural land. So, you know, you could be a blacksmith, you could be a farrier, you could be a welding business, a tractor dealer, something that's related to agriculture and brings employment. So this gentleman got planning permission, but the house they gave him planning permission for was actually the same size as his static caravan. It was only 32 foot by 20 foot, so the internal floor space was the same as the static caravan it replaced. So don't think using these loopholes you're going to get a seven bedroom mansion with a swimming pool, a jacuzzi, a sauna. You know, that's pretty difficult. But basically to answer the question, yes you can site a static caravan on agricultural land, but you need to you know you need to be smart about what you're doing you can put it there but to live on it you would either need to you know avoid the planners for at least 10 years really if it's a caravan you know you could maybe build a log cabin in the woods you're not allowed to hide it there's a gentleman called mr robert fiddler that we all know about i'm sure you can read the, the daily mail article online and robert's fiddler had a farm, I think he was actually a lorry dealer really, down in England and he built a mansion. He hid it behind straw bales and after four years and a day he removed the straw bales and revealed his mansion. He apl applied for a certificate of lawful use which was immediately rejected and it was rejected on the backgrounds that he hid his house. You're not allowed to hide it. You could build it in the woods, so that's not hiding it. You know, if you're building, put it somewhere discreet. That caravan is behind a six foot fence, it's not hidden. It's next to our, our utility block and it's in the yard. It's not, we've not hidden it. Everybody knows it's there. The planning officers are always here. They love to, love to take a little visit to check um, that the sheds are built proper, properly. Um, I've got a neighbour that loves to, loves to report us to the planners. We're going to do another video, probably later on, about permitted development rights for agricultural small holdings, agricultural farms and how they've just changed. Because you don't need planning permission to build buildings like this, but you do need to inform the planning authority that you're exercising your permitted development rights and that you're, you are going to build. You have to give them 28 days notice and put the planning department on notice that that is what you're doing. So 
I hope that was useful to some people. I hope that clarified things. And thanks for watching Lock North Smithy Off Grid. My name's Richard. If you could drop us a comment below if you've got a small holding or if you're off grid, drop us a little comment below, let us know what you're doing. I'd love to have a look at your channel. Give us a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you like the video, if you want to share it, share it on Facebook. I don't really understand Instagram or any of that, but if you want to share, share our videos on all that sort of social media, give it a share, let us know. That'd be great, so thanks for watching.